I did it. That's beautiful. Okay, we are now recording. Okay, hello everyone who knows me. My name is Sarah. Um, so today we're going to be making zines. You can call them zines if you want, but if you want to be in the cool club, we're going to call them zines, short for fanzine or magazine. Um, what's really cool about zines, as you probably already know, um, is that once you're done making it, you can unfold it, put it on a photocopier, and make a bazillion copies. So this is a lot different from like fanzines where they're just a lot harder to copy. And some definition of zines is that you usually have to have less than one, one to 5,000 copies. But it's okay if you don't even make one copy, like it's still, it's still equally a zine. So we're just going to help you learn how to make your first copy of your zine. Maybe, maybe you've already made them. But what you will need, you just need two things, a sheet of paper and some scissors. And the sheet of paper, this is printer paper, it's called like the size is A4 and like printer paper language, but you can really use any size, but this just like helps if you're trying to photocopy it. So if you have like a really small post-it note or a lined paper, like that, that's fine. I mean, you can work with that, but it's just kind of nice to have the, the printer paper size. So hopefully you have a paper and you have some scissors. And if so, I'll wait for maybe Melissa to gather yes, the paper. I need to go get scissors. I don't have my scissors yet. It's a good first step. Just have them, have them on hand. Ara, uh, does it have to be blank on both sides or can you recycle paper and it has something on one side? It can be whatever you want it to be. Okay. Yeah, that's good. It's a good use of paper. I. It's old. What is this? Oh, yeah. I'm not prepared. Okay. All right. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to use a white. No, maybe I'm going to go yellow. I definitely did not steal this colored paper from the biology department. I would never do that. Um, I don't know where I found this yellow paper. Okay, so here I am with my yellow sheet of paper. The first thing we're going to do is fold it as like, I don't know, elementary school people called it. We're going to fold it hamburger style. If you want to fold it hot dog style, I can't stop you. Well, that's uh, too much. That's so informative. <laughs> so I, I don't understand. I'm just following what you're doing. Okay, so at least in elementary school where I went to school, when we folded paper, I guess this was actually a thing we did a lot. If you fold it like fat ways or like, like so it's like a book, we called that hamburger style. And if you fold it skinny ways, it's like a, it's like a hot dog bun called a hot dog style. We did not have those terms in Germany. But either, so just fold it, fold it in half. And then if you want to, you want some really good creases. So, you know, I like to go back over and just fold it the other way also. I'm going to make sure that these creases are top notch creases. Really smooth out those creases. And you want to line up your paper as good as possible because the more you fold it, the more it's going to get misaligned. So you don't, you don't want a bad hamburger fold to start. You want a really good hamburger fold. Or falling short. What? You said you're falling short. We just started. <laughs> I gotta clean up my folds. <laughs> okay, here we go. I think I'm good now. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to fold it the other way or hot dog style, vertical style. Exact same thing. And just like we did before, I would recommend that you actually go back and crease it the other way too. So now when you open it, you should have four equal sides, four quadrants of very nicely creased paper. You should be very proud of your paper at this point. This is like an ordination plot almost. Love it. <laughs> Joe, you're not even participating. No comments from the Joe Gallery for that. Okay. okay. 
So hopefully you're at this stage. Okay. Now this is the part, and I'm I'm not trying to blow this, like make this bigger deal than it needs to be, but you need to be very careful with your creases. I mean, it's very simple, but this is where your your uh, creases can come misaligned. And there's there's lots of different ways to fold it into eighths. So I'm gonna show you a way that I like to do, but maybe you have your own way of folding your paper into eights. I like to come in here and fold the outside inward to the middle crease like that. But another way you could do it, I mean, you could, you could also fold it, fold it in half and then fold. There are many different ways to fold a paper into eights. I'll just show you that I sort of like doing it this way folding outward and then in. But as long as you get that paper into nice eights. That's all we care about. And just like the other creases, you want to go back and crease them the opposite way. So now you have paper folded into eighths and you should be able to crease it really easily from any direction. You should have something that looks like this. Are you good, Mike? Yay, okay. Okay, now, this is where the getting gets real. We're gonna fold it over a hot dog, sorry, hamburger style, so like a book. So it's like this. Okay, so we're good, we folded. I got my crease here, my inner crease, and got my outside part here. Gotta pay lots of attention here. So here I am holding the crease. I'm going to make a cut along this fold. So not not this fold. We're not we're not trying to cut the outside parts of the paper. We're, we want to cut it along the middle fold. So can you see that? So I will be cutting and I will only be cutting uh, to the center of the fold. So I'm going to cut I'll show you from here to here. On it, the cut will actually happen on both sides, so I'll show you. Here it is. Crease is towards me, so I'm going to cut very meticulously towards the center. So it should look like this. Very good. Very good, Sophia. Very good. And now when everyone's done with the one and only cut, that's that's the only thing you needed the scissors for. And if you find yourself without scissors, you can you can rip it if you want to go a little wild, a little, you know, 70s punk, you can. But that that was the only cut you need to make. So now we're done with the scissors. So hopefully your zine in progress looks something like this. So now what we're gonna do, we got two sides and a little flippy out part, little fins or something. We're going to fold it together. So it was like this. You cut it. You're going to sort of make these flaps go out a little. And then you're going to fold it together. And then you can start to see that it's already resembling a book. So just try to squish it together as best as you can. And that's where you can see how well you did at folding. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, you can sort of push it together so that the the edges are a little bit tighter. And you can fold it any way. You can see it's sort of like a, what do you call it? A rotating door. Like it doesn't matter which one is actually the title or the front. It should look something like this. So. And there you have it. You should have completed or being 
You should be close to completing your first zine. Yeah. To congratulate you, you've already given yourself a zine, so that's cool. <laughs> Okay, and so there's two different approaches to what to do next. And I just wanted you to learn how to make the zine, but then what you do with the zine is up to you. You can write in it, you can do nothing, you can, I don't know. Some people like copy and paste things from magazines into their zine, like zineception or something. But what I like to do with them, and I have a whole pack of zines here, is I like to write all the stuff I should be learning in grad school. So I have written stuff in my zine, like a little book. So that's one approach. You could write in it, like it's a title page, and then write more stuff, and then write more stuff. Or some people go a little wild. If you unfold your zine, you can like doodle on your page, do whatever you want. You can go crazy because it's your zine. You can like overlap on the edges, and then when you fold it, if you make like really crazy looking doodles and stuff and then you fold it back, it's probably going to look really cool however it, it ends up when you fold it. So that is it. That is introduction to zine making. Um, yeah, you something see that's... one of your cool ones? Yeah. Here. Here are definitions related to the microbiome. I mean, with doodles. With doodles? Yeah. You know, your drawings I and oh, I don't I don't do the crazy I just do it panel by panel you haven't done one single one not okay well I will let's do it together if you want <laughs> I thought that this might be enough but you don't like that well you got us all excited about the doodle thing and so you just can't okay stop doodle time Sarah okay okay let's let's doodle Oh my gosh, you should have I think I am going to forego doodling and I am going to put the different mechanisms of infection for phages. Yeah, I don't think I want to doodle either. I'm going to doodle. I want to write a little story. With don't seaweed. Don't forget the seaweed. I wasn't going to. And penguins. I wasn't going to forget those either. Very good. Okay, this is not really doodling, but I just wrote today, I learned to make zines and then I drew a book and then I wrote that it's a book and then I said, I love books and I'm just gonna fold it and we'll see how cool it looks. It's pretty cool again. Today I learned cool. it just looks kind of cool when you don't like use the panels as a frame. Yeah, it does. Like but it's that. also harder to read. Then you could just unfold it. Though. Yeah. You really had to know. Melissa is a benefactor of copies of all of my original zines. So if y'all want some microbiome zines, I have tons of them. I have so I've made so many photocopies of them. And Joe really enjoys being the person to cut them up for me. That's a joke, it's not. <laughs> what? He doesn't, you mean? Okay. 
And something that I've learned probably about everything in life, like usually it takes me at least two copies, I think, to get the thing I want to make. Like this was something I made, but then I just redid it and it looked a lot better. That makes sense. Um, what are you putting in your zine, Mike? It's going to be all French vocabulary and grammar. And I want to learn French. Can you teach me a word in French? No. Does that mean no? We. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Uh, how do you? So when you, I didn't catch the thing you said then about the photocopy. Yeah, so is, I have this sheet of paper and then I unfold it and you can lay it on a copy machine so that when it prints off, like here's an example, like here it is just printed off as a sheet of paper. And so what I would have to do with this sheet of paper is go back and do all the folds again, but the content is already there. That way I don't have to remake each content. Um, and it should already have some of the creases probably like lined up for you. But anyway, you just fold it in eighths and then you cut it and then it's ready to go. Um, so you can make copies of them and that's why they're so cool. <laughs>